Radiant measure. Radiant measure is a great name for a topic because radians are the main things we're going to be dealing with. And secondly, this is an issue that begins with measurement. Namely, how do we measure angles, right? In what way, what unit should we use to measure angles? Now, this might seem like a silly question to pose. Like, why, why, think, why even ask this question? We already have a perfectly adequate answer to it. And that is, how do we measure angles at the moment? What unit do we use? We use degrees. And degrees have been serving us faithfully for many, many years. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why introduce this confusing thing, which some of you have seen this, and you're like, why, why pies? Why? Why, why messy? Okay, because why not? This is a good plan, right? Now, it turns out that there are two fundamental reasons why um, mathematics, and really the universe, kind of forces our hand and says, you know what? If you want to measure, if you want to deal with angles, then degrees are not enough. The reason no, no, you need to introduce a new way of doing this. And it's less intuitive to begin with, partly because we've had this old way of doing things and our brains are kind of configured to think in those terms. But once you reconfigure, the benefits are significant, okay? So I said that there were two main reasons, okay? Let me tell you what they are. The first one is circles. The first one is circles. Jot down for me um, that, and then draw for me a couple of small circles. This is what this is for. <laughs> I've been waiting for this. My investment video. has okay. been Now, oh, by the way, I will show you a super neat trick um, to draw circles with paper clips. Um, and, um, and I'll show you this later on. You can do the, I've showed you the, the knuckle one. If you bust it, then it's like, you feel like such a, you feel like such a badass doing that. You're like, whoop, and the page goes around you like, Yes. But um, for those of us with less hand-eye coordination, I'll show you the paper trick later. It's like a potato and then Now, when we are dealing with circles, I think we all recognize that measuring in circles is a bit icky. It's a little bit icky. Let me give you an example. Uh, in fact, I'll give you two. That's why I have two circles. If you have some circle, right, and you say, for instance, how oh, it's radius. Let's say its radius is, say, seven centimeters. Okay, just as an example. And suppose I want to measure out some distance around the circumference, right? So the curved distance, we call that, starts with an A, a curved distance around the circumference, we call that an arc, right? So if I want to measure some distance around the arc, oh, I don't know, let's, let's get a new color. Say something like this. Let's go around like that amount, okay? So I know how big the circle is, right? And I look at this arc and I say, well, look, it, and the word we use is, it subtends an angle at the center, right? Now, I don't know. I, I just made up that kind of arc. Really. What angle does that look like? If you could estimate an angle size in degrees, what would you call that? 120. What, I, it's pretty close to 180, isn't it? Like, it's pretty close no, to a... No. Straight. 150. Like, it's this angle. Like, if I put a straight line here... That's a big angle. Well, someone said 120. I think 120 is much closer to a right angle than it is to... Like, 150 is halfway, right? Between... That's 150 right then. And, yeah? That's 150. Oh, sorry, 150 it's is not, not halfway. 135 is halfway. 130, right? It's 135. I think it's much closer to, like, 150 or so. I'm just going to call it 150. But it's the line... Because I need to fit it. If I fit in an extra 30 degree angle, I think I get pretty close to 180. Okay. All right, now, if that's the angle there, how do I use that? That's all the information I need. How do I use that to measure <coughs> this arc? Now, I'm not actually interested in the distance. I just want to think about the working and how it looks, right? Well, what I'm going to have to say is, look, uh, the whole circle, if I went all the way around, would be how many degrees? 360, right? Now, I don't have the entire 360 degrees. I've only got 150 of them, yes? So what I would have to say is, look, I don't want the entire circumference. I just want that much of the circumference. Do you agree with that? Like that's the proportion, the little part, the fraction of the circumference that I'm interested in, that will give me the arc, right? So there's the part of it. And then of course I need the circumference, right? Which would be in this case, uh, two pi r, which is seven. Yeah, is that okay? So I, I'm not actually interested in the answer. I just want to look at the thought process of where we get there, okay? That's kind of awkward, right? See what happens if I'm dealing with an area. So if I draw in, I need my algorithm. If I draw in something like, oh, I don't know, something like this.
Everybody. So let's say this is a different circle. Let's say it has a, a, a radius of five centimeters, like that. And I don't know, that angle, yeah, maybe 100 degrees, say. Okay. So if I call that 100 degrees, okay. if I call that 100 degrees, again, not interested in the actual number, how am I going to work out the area that has been shaded? What would I do? The cosine rule. This is a curved right, part, so right? Triangles aren't going to do me here, right? Not to mention that the cosine rule will find a sign or an angle, but I want to find an area, right? What am I going to do? Do you use the degrees that the angle is um, to, as a fraction over the... Uh, okay, okay, very good. I'm going to have to do this thing over again, aren't I, right? I want some proportion of the whole circle, not the whole thing. In fact, the proportion that I want is 100 on 360, right? Because 360 would be the whole thing. So 360 over 360 would just give me the circle. But I don't want the whole circle. I just want this thing. What's this called again? Starts with an S. It's a sector, right? Piece of pie. So that's the proportion of it. And then I'm going to multiply by just my regular area formula, which is pi r squared. Okay. I'm just going to pause for a moment. Really important concept to wrap your head around, so that's why your attention's required and your punctuality. Okay, now I hope you notice, right? In both of these cases, which are simple things, you're just trying to measure a length or an area, right? I hope you see that every time a conversion kind of has to sneak in. Do you notice that, right? Like degrees are not inherent to the circle. Degrees are something we introduce. Why divide it into 360 equal portions? Well, the short answer is convenience. Like 360 divides evenly into 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8. Does it divide into 8? 9, 10, 12. It divides into a lot of things. That's kind of convenient for us. You can build nice handy clocks out of it, okay? But apart from that, like, there's nothing about the circle that says 360 is the magic number. Okay? If anything, 360 is the magic number because we've made it the magic number. Uh, and we, you know, things like oh, dual 180, right? those have entered into our language and our vernacular precisely because we chose this number. But you can see when you're doing the maths, this number is awkward. It, it sort of makes things messy for us. You have to convert. So there's the first reason. Circles. If we want to deal with circles in a neater way, degrees are not sufficient. Now the second reason is not as obvious, but it is actually much more important. And that is not circle, but calculus. Okay? And this is really why this topic is positioned where it is in the sequence that you've been learning things. Okay? Um, draw for me just a really rough sine curve. Would you do that? Okay, now, <laughs> you can see here, right, calculus is going to take us to things like the sine x graph. There's like the sine x. And it's going to be the tool that helps us understand the gradient of the curve, okay? It's going to give us the gradient function. Now, hopefully you can see, we know already, just by looking at this thing, that at least the part of it that I've drawn, I have two stationary points, that's nice, so I know exactly what the gradient is going to be equal to at those two points. However, everywhere else along the curve, the gradient function of this function is completely subject to the number that we place there, right? Do you agree with that? Like, the top and the bottom, they're already limited. We already know how to deal with, based on the unit circle, we already know that this number has to be 1 and this number has to be negative 1. That's, that's the biggest and lowest that the um, sine curve can go. That's the range. But this number on the end, it's whatever we make it, right? So if I make this number a really huge number, like a million, okay, then this, this graph is actually very stretched out. Right? So that would mean the gradient here is quite shallow. Do you agree with that? Like, if I made it something tiny, like say one, right, that would mean the whole graph is squashed and compressed into this very small space, which means that its gradient will be very, very steep. Okay? So the gradient at this point and this point and this point, all of those gradients are dependent on, well, what scale are you going to choose? Okay? What number makes sense to put there 
that makes calculus, like making all the differentiation, all the integration that we're going to do, that makes it nice and simple and neat. That tends to, that actually ends up being the fundamental question. This is kind of our in. We're going to spend some time on circle measurement briefly. But this is really where we're headed. Okay? So circles and calculus, they're the reason why. We're going to take this existing unit measurement system and just rip it out and replace it with a whole new one. Because it's inadequate for dealing with either of these problems.